The Earth is a water planet, but global water resources are under attack. From dead zones to acidic oceans, rising seas to plastic pollution, our water planet is changing in ways that threaten us all. The good news is, solutions exist, and Earth Echo is on the way to find them. I'm Philippe Cousteau. Join me as we explore some of the causes of and solutions to one of the most pressing environmental crises of our time on Earth Echo Expedition's Plastic Seas. In Melbourne, Australia, impacts of plastic are everywhere. In order to engineer solutions to a problem of this magnitude, we first have to investigate the cause. We're here at the Port Phillip Eco Center. Now, we're meeting with Neil Blake. He's otherwise known as Captain Trash, and I'm really excited because he's been one of the most engaging, passionate, and colorful leaders on the issue of ocean plastics for decades. Come on. Neil, nice such a pleasure you. to finally meet you. Uh, one of the main goals for Neil is to teach the community and legislators about how plastic finds its way into Port Phillip Bay. I collected this about a week ago and this is the sort of stuff that is coming down the creek. Lots of stuff that breaks into smaller particles so that people aren't even aware that it's there. And that's really the change that we want to people to be much more conscious of how much plastic there is in the environment. Now, one of the biggest contributors to plastic pollution comes in a form that most people never even see. The nurdles are pre-production pallets of plastic that have escaped from loading bays or factory floors. These are shipped around to create practically everything that's made out of plastic. So they're in that form for convenience. So this transport. is the raw material. That's right. They're very light too and also look a bit like fish eggs as they're floating in the water. The consumer never interacts with it in this form. They're coming essentially from industrial sites, so our manufacturers. So in that sense, we've got a clue as to who we need to talk to about this to actually address the issue. Where did this come from? On beaches around Port Phillip Bay. So yeah, they're, they're all out there in the waterways now, billions of them. Neil takes groups out into the nearby streets to show how plastic finds its way from the city down to the edge of the bay. Here you go, right here. So, One yeah. and two. And a lid. Lots of the, uh, those kind of lids, coffee cup lids, etc. Plastic straws. Then he'll record data to estimate how much plastic is on local beaches. To do that, he'll have groups help to lay down one by one meter squares, also known as quadrants, in different sections of the beach, counting what they find in each spot. I do see some straws here, some smaller bits of plastic. Yeah. So, so it looks like we've got two straws. Drinks, yeah. we've got I've got yeah. a couple pieces of small plastic from the first quadrant here. Four of those. And there's another hard plastic there too. So. What about this? This is a uh, that's candy wrapper. Confectionery wrap on the, on the data sheet here. Yep, so that can go down there. We've got two cigarette butts here. And then we flip this over. Yep. This is clear evidence of an ongoing problem. May not appear to be a lot but it adds up over time, and that's what we need people to understand, that every little bit of litter really matters. Especially when you multiply it over millions of beaches around the world, yeah. and this is a good visual reminder, because we need those visual cues and visual reminders yeah. of, of what's going on. While Neil tracks how plastic gets from the city into the bay, Blair Stafford is looking in another direction. He wants to see how much plastic makes its way in from the open ocean. Most people think about plastics, they think, oh, it's just going to break down and it's going to disappear. But the thing is, plastic breaks up into tiny pieces. What we're trying to work out is, is it the greater Melbourne area that's responsible for the plastic pollution into the bay, or is it an external force? What we're chasing is anything one to five millimetres, that's microplastics. The practicalities of the matter trawl are really, really easy. You have two flotation devices either, size of, either side of a catchment area, and at the end of the catchment area, you have a net and a large sock at the back. Blair uses a manta trawler for 30 minutes once every month. In the first six months of his study, the evidence seems to show plastic finding its way into the bay is coming locally, primarily through rivers and storm drains. We'll see if today makes him think any differently. After 30 minutes, it's time to see what we found. The best result we could have hoped for is no microplastics, and to the naked eye, it looks like that's what we have here. 
terrific. But what we'll do, of course, is when I take it back home, I'll basically dry it out for 24 hours, okay. pour whatever contents there are into an envelope, send it off to the lab, to see right. what the results are. Well, fingers crossed that yeah. uh, the trend continues. Yeah, let's hope so. Blair's trawl today may have come up empty, but throughout Port Phillip Bay, marine wildlife deal with massive impacts from plastic pollution. And as we'll see next, researchers encounter the long-term devastation on a daily basis. To learn more about plastic pollution and find out how you can take action to make a positive difference in your community, visit Earth Echo International at eartheco.org. Earth Echo Expedition is sponsored by the Northrop Grumman Foundation. Northrop Grumman is a leading global security company dedicated to increasing STEM education opportunities for students and the teachers who inspire them.